On Thursday, the United States officially hit its debt limit, increasing the pressure on Congress to broker a deal before the U.S. defaults. Democrats are still advocating, though, for more spending and continuing down an unsustainable path of government expansion. And for taxpayers who foot the bill and pay the debt, something's just not right with that. I'll tell you, Dave, I've been over this stuff a bunch of times. It just doesn't add up. Who does these books? I mean, if I ran my business this way, I'd, I'd be out of business. So what can we do? You know, I see a lot of places you could say, but, you know, I can't make those choices. I mean, I'm not the president. I mean, you know, I mean, I'm not, I'm not uh, the one, you know, pretending to be the president. Now, why is it that Hollywood seemed to get this right about three decades ago, but Washington is still seems to be dragging its feet? Now, back when that movie Dave was made, it was a great movie, by the way, in 1993, the federal budget was $1.41 trillion, the deficit was $255 billion, and the national debt was $4.3 trillion and 64% of GDP. Now, Compare that with today. Today, the debt is 120% of GDP, and the debt is more than $30 trillion. With Republicans in charge of the House, what can they do and what should they do about America's borrowing and spending addiction? Here to discuss Alabama Congressman Robert Adderholt, who is the new chairman of the House Appropriations Subcommittee on Labor, Health, and Human Services and Education. Uh, Congressman? We appreciate you being here. Uh, you know, so many people look at non-defense spending uh, in particular as a significant driver of the debt, uh, but also a lot of the economic issues that we're facing. Why do, are we continuing to run up to this debt limit? Well, it's uh, really a crazy situation. You know, I've been in Congress uh, for several years now, and uh, I have seen the, the debt increase steadily over the years. And and I will say uh, some of that was due to COVID uh, and the coronavirus, and we, we understand that. And there was some things that we had to spend to keep the economy uh, afloat and make sure that our economy did not crash during that time. But uh, over the since the Biden administration has began in the last two years, there's been somewhere over $5 trillion. And uh, a lot of this is just on spending that is not anything that is necessary um, they're sort of nice things to have, but they're not necessary. At some point, we have to come and say, we can't just keep raising the debt limit. It's like, uh, you know, you have a credit card and you have a, there's a debt limit on it. And you can't just keep spending and spending and spending. Now, I'll be the first to say, I don't want the, the, this country to default on our debt. Uh, I don't think any Republican does. Mm. And we don't have any intention to. But some members of Congress won't really focus on trying to cut spending unless they're really pushed to the wall. Yeah. And we're hopefully that this is a situation where we're pushed to the wall and we're saying, all right, we're going to change instead of being back here from a year from now and we're raising the debt limit again. Yeah, you know, look, the people have been talking about how to do this for a long time. Heritage Foundation put out a plan uh, that would cut federal spending by trillions of dollars through various reforms. Give us a taste, if, if you could, Congressman, about what we could expect in terms of a bold plan to address spending. Well, I know that a lot of members of Congress want to cut defense, uh, or I say there are a certain segment out there that does. I, I'm not sure at this juncture that is the best way that we need to cut spending. Um, you know, I'm sure there's things within the Defense Department, there's waste that needs to be cut out. I am all for that. But as far as just an overall cut of a defense spending, I just don't think with what's going on with China, what's going on with Russia, what we've seen in Ukraine, it's just not, that's just not the way we need to go. Let's clean up some of the, the uh, frivolous expenditures, but really where we've got to make sure that we cut spending is uh, growing these uh, programs that are continue to grow in the United States. Now, that doesn't mean that I'm against Social Security and Medicare. I think those programs are, are, have served their pur are serving their purpose and will serve their purpose, but there are a lot of outgrowths. We need to make sure we have so many people in this country that are, that are fleecing the system we have so much spending in the United States that, that could be pared back. And there's a way that we can do it. 
And there's so many of my colleagues in Washington, and, mm -hmm. and particularly the Democrats, uh, that just uh, want to keep spending. And I and it's sort of like keeping yeah. the can down the road. Yeah. And that's it, the problem. Yeah, you, you know, there's a there's a, the issue also of Federal Reserve reform. The Federal Reserve uh, is is not really focused on monetary policy the way that it should. It's printing money. How do you address that? Is that something that your committee will or that the Appropriations Committee will look at uh, as well? Well, on the Appropriations Committee, we our committee is focused on appropriating the money. And, of course, that's what we've got to do is make sure that we look for uh, spending, uh, area areas of spending that need to be pared down. Uh, and for example, when, when an agency comes in and say they got $100 million, just for example, last year uh, in, a, in a certain area, uh, and now they come back and say we need $101 million, and the next year it's $102 million or $105 million. And what we need to do, about, we need to, for them to say, how do you justify spending that first $100 million? Mm -hmm. And uh, really zero-based uh, funding for these agencies and saying, you know, let, show us where you're using the money we're already giving you. And then if you need more and it's serving the American people, then we'll look at that. Yeah. You know, I, I think, Congressman, the most concrete thing uh, that government can do, and I think that Americans are looking for that, is, is cutting down on the amount of these transfer payments, these transfer programs. Um, in other words, welfare programs. I mean, if you, if you look at this, this chart, the percentage of Americans on welfare programming um, and getting transfer payments from the government has increased dramatically, and it's and Democrats want it to continue to increase for years to come. In the 1990s, Republicans helped rein this in. Americans really want to stop the giveaways. Um, you know, I'm asking you: will, will we see an entitlement reform package that is meaningful coming out of the GOP leadership in the House? I think you will see something coming out of the Republican GOP. Of course, the problem is right now that we've got to get the Senate, and then we have to get the president to sign off on it. Well, I so, mean, but, but, uh, just, but we, just in terms of trying to advance a, a conversation. No, we, you're absolutely right. We have to advance this. And I, I'm just saying that we have a long row ahead of us. Mm -hmm. But we, have, we can't sit back and just say that's an excuse. So I totally agree. We can't say that just because the Senate is not going to pass it or because the president is not going to sign it mean that we don't act. So we do have to act and we've got to, and you're exactly right. There's so many of the, these programs that people are fleecing the system. If someone is disabled and someone needs help, you know, I, I'm all for that. We need to try to figure out a program to give them a, a hand mm -hmm. up. Uh, but uh, certainly we need to make sure that there's people that are out there that are work that are, that are, out there, able-bodied citizens, we need to cut that out, and we've got to work on that, and mm -hmm. I'm hopeful that some of our committees right. controlled now by Republicans can do that. All right, we're going to leave it there, but we're, I'm sure we're going to continue this conversation down the road. Congressman Robert Adderholm, sure. thank you so much Thanks, for being Tom. with us. Appreciate it. Good to, be, good to be with you. Hey, guys, it's Rob Carson. Your retirement funds are being threatened with even more losses from record inflation, recession, and skyrocketing interest rates. Fortunately, the highly trained specialists at American Hartford Gold can show you how to protect your savings and retirement accounts by diversifying your portfolio with physical gold and silver. If you call them right now, it's a special offer. They will give you a free gold coin on your first qualifying order, so don't wait. Call 866-935-4309. That's 866-935-4309 or text Newsmax to 65532. That's Newsmax to 65532.